Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, if you're a regular to my channel, you know that I like to give you a few interesting things to have a look at in the night sky, and that includes the Messier catalogue. And uh, one target I've kind of been avoiding <laughs> a little is uh, today's target, M1. Now, the reason being, M1, or in brackets, the Crab Nebula, um, it's, it's kind of a it's a bit of an elusive target it can be a bit of a challenge to find and uh, I wanted to get this video out in fact I'm a little bit late really getting this video out because uh, um, the, the crab neighbor is more of a winter uh, target and as we're coming towards the end of, uh, of the winter of the winter months at the time of recording this video you have still got um, plenty of time to see it but it is getting lower and lower in the uh, south so um, well it's south south east yeah south southeast that's right no south southwest <laughs> i'm just getting my bearings where i am south southwest um it, it's uh, kind of setting a little bit but uh, where it's positioned it's still quite high up in the sky so what i'm going to do is i'll first of all i'll show you how you find the crab nebula and then i'll give you a few tips on uh, on being a little bit more successful of actually getting to see this elusive target now, the Crab Nebula lies in the constellation of Taurus, and the easiest way to find Taurus and identify where Taurus is, is to use our old favourite, Orion. Now, Orion, at the time of recording this video, is getting lower and lower in the uh, south-southwest. So, but like I say, you've still got plenty of time to observe the Crab Nebula. Now, if you look at the three stars that represent the belt of Orion, and if we were to imagine there's a line going straight up from the bell, it points virtually straight to Taurus. And this is Taurus here. Now, it's uh, got the dominant star Aldebaran um, in Taurus, a very bright yellow star. Now, what's distinctive about Taurus is this distinctive V-shape representing the head of the bull. Um, it doesn't look very distinctive on this uh, particular image here, but trust me, it really does stand out. There's no mistaking this V-shape of Taurus. Now, what we, where we need to go from here is you need to identify these two stars here and here, which represent the horns of the bull. Um, now, I'll let you pronounce those <laughs> yourself, because pronunciation of stars can be so um bizarre at times but they're the two stars you want to be identifying in taurus now be careful that you've got the right two stars because it is so easy to get this star just here uh, mixed up as one of the pair of the horns so just make sure that you have got the right two uh, stars that represent the uh, the tips of the horns of the bull if you like now we need to go over to this star here uh, um, I'm going. To, I'm going to call it the left hand star, <laughs> for sake of mispronunciation. Right. We'll just click that off. Now, where we need to be now, once you've identified this uh, this star here, uh, this star here in Taurus, after following the belts up from the uh, line up from the uh, belts of Orion into the V shape, then identify this star here. What is it? Is it what should we say? Tiangion. Tiangion. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who comes up with these names, but they're very bizarre. Right, now if we zoom in a little bit, you'll start seeing a little feature appear. Oh, you should do. Where is it? There it is. And as you can see, virtually at the, right at the side of the left hand star, as we're calling it, of the horns, is the Crab Nebula. Now, as you can see, it's relatively easy to find this one, but um, actually seeing it, well, that's another story. So let's just go into uh, a few, a little few more details on uh, how your best, your best chances of actually getting to see this elusive target, the Crab Nebula. Now, what you're actually looking at when you do find the Crab Nebula is what is called a supernova. Now, a supernova is quite a, a spectacular and violent event. And um, it starts off 
when a very large star has completely exhausted its fuel, it collapses on itself in a spectacular violent explosion. After the explosion, the gas expands into space whilst the core of the exploded star becomes a super dense lump of matter called a neutron star. Now, a few tips on actually observing the Crab Nebula. Now, for one, don't even think about having a go at the Crab, crab Nebula if there's any kind of moon um, up uh, above the horizon. And what I mean by any kind, that's any phase, really. Um, it, you need a completely moonless night. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is dark skies. I know I sound like I'm droning on a bit and I keep repeating myself with saying dark skies, but it really is important with this one. Now, if you haven't got, now we are, you're not, don't worry, a lot of us, a big percentage of us have to deal with light pollution. But I live on the outskirts of a town, the town of Chesterfield, and I can just, and I mean just, see this target in this telescope. Uh, this is a five inch reflector. So y you can see it in, in, in telescopes of smaller aperture, but again, you're going to need those dark skies. Now, if you, like I say, if you can't get to darker locations or you haven't got these dark skies, it's so important that you get your eyes as best dark adapters as you possibly can. Now, dark adaptation is just simply keeping away from any source of artificial light for at least 30 to 40 minutes. Now, that's in, this doesn't seem like quite a, a, um, that much of a long time, but trust me, when you're just sitting around and hanging around, this means you can't look at your phone, you can't look at the TV, nothing, okay? At the most, have a, if you do want to do something to occupy your mind while you're getting dark adapted, uh, a red light. Uh, but even red lights can sometimes be a little bit too bright. So just put in a couple of layers of tape, um, like a brown tape or, or something like that across um, the lens of these red torches can really bring them the, uh, the glow down a lot. Um, and maybe you could read read up about your target in a book that you want to find that particular night. Um, it really is important this. Uh, you won't stand a chance, trust me, um, if you give it just 10 minutes or t even 20 minutes of dark. You need a good half an hour to 40 minutes. Really let your eyes get adjusted to it. Now this also um, means that when you go out to your telescope, that you don't happen to glance at a street light. Just glancing and saying, oh, that annoying light or whatever, that's it, that's your dash, 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 night vision gone in, in an instant. So it really is, make, make sure that, you know, um, putting like a, a hood over your head. I know it sounds a little bit melodramatic all this, but it really is important to see in these um, little faint fuzzes. So putting a, head, a hood over your head, just to shield you from any um, light sources that are coming into the telescope, you know, uh, surround the telescope with, um, with anything that can block light off. I um, mean, you know, I'm quite lucky. I've, I've, well, I'm not saying lucky, but what I've done is we've, we've got a, an old washing line that I've kept up that's ideal for just hanging sheets up uh, that block out a really annoying light that I've got. But it is very important that you get as best dark adapted uh, uh, as you possibly can on a moonless night, and that is the best chance of seeing this amazing uh, target, really, the Crab Nebula. Now, like I always say uh, with these uh, kind of harder to see targets, don't be disappointed if you don't get to see it. There will be a time when you will get to see it, when the conditions are going to be right, when you've got the right telescope or you're under the right skies uh, and you will see it. At least now you know where to look and point your telescope when uh, the, the the situation or the conditions are better suited. So there you go folks, yet another target for you to go and hunt and find on the next clear night. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you've watched this far, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, hit that like button because it really does help the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe think about subscribing because I do do regular uploads for the new astronomer. In the meantime, take great care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.